Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and in today's video, we're going to do a demonstration with the Prototrack RMX control. And we're going to show how to do uh, island pockets, which are one of the more difficult things to do, especially with the older controls that could only have one island in a pocket. And the shapes were somewhat binding as to what you could actually make them. So uh, most of you guys have seen a demo at some time or another that we affectionately call the ballpark. And it's a difficult part to make if you have to do it by hand. It's a difficult part to make if you need to open up your CAD CAM system just to do a little bit of geometry. It's an easy part to make in a Prototrack because that's what Prototracks are designed for, right? And uh, we're going to take that easy part and we're going to turn it into a more difficult part and show you how to do that. So right now I'm going to go to the program mode and you're going to notice in here that I've at the first page, I've already entered the name of the part by using the keyboard window, okay? So I'm going to go forward and I help myself a little bit by already making the rectangle of the outside of the part. Okay, so I've got all the typical stuff in a typical rectangular pocket is in here. Nothing you guys don't already know. So I'm going to swipe forward and I'm going to start by doing the drilling in the four corners. So I'm going to select drill and in my defaults, I've already got it to assume that I'm going to drill a hole. But I have the drop down menu if I needed to change that to doing boring or doing tapping, right? So I'm just going to hit the set key here and it's asking me my first X dimension. Okay, my X dimension is 2.45 inches. And my first Y dimension is 2.25 inches, okay? So that's the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to put in 100 thousandths for a rapid. I'm going to go minus 3 eighths in depth. I'm going to put 5 pecs in here, put it at 1,200 for an RPM, 5 inches a minute for drilling, and I'm going to use tool number 2, okay? So you see my first hole there. One of the nice advantages with using the options now is I can swipe back to that and select the options menu. And in here, there's a place to put on multiple holes. And it's asking me where I want the next hole. So what it's going to do is it's going to take everything I've populated in this drilling event and put it in a different location, OK? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 2.45. And I'm going to go to negative 2.25. So that's the first hole. The next one, I'm going to go to negative 2.45. And negative 2.45. Whoops, sorry. Negative 2.25. The last one I'm going to do is going to be a positive 2.45. I'm sorry, a negative 2.45. I have to think about this in my head a little bit. And a positive 2.25. So when I get done with my holes here, I just simply push complete. You'll notice all four holes are in the corners. And you'll also notice that it created new events for each drilling event with the same information in it. Okay, so enough of that stuff. Let's get on to the really fun part, making this island pocket, right? So as you guys have all seen this print before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by saying that I want to go to a pocket. And in here, I'm going to create an island pocket. Now, the first thing it's asking me is the shape of the outside of the pocket. So this is completely reversed from the way an SMX works, right? And it also, an SMX would not let you make the outside of the pocket an odd shape. Now I can. So I'm going to select irregular pocket and it wants to know a starting point. So from the ballpark, I'm going to start at 0 and 2.45 inches. Okay, I'm going to use a Z rapid of 50 thousandths, and I'm going to go 3 eighths deep again. Okay, it's asking how many passes. I think I can just do this in two passes. My finish cut is automatically there from my defaults, so I'm going to leave that at 10 thousandths. I'm going to put this at 3,000 RPM for both the rough and the finish. I'm going to plunge in at 10 inches a minute. I'm going to machine at 20, and I'm going to finish at 20. And you'll notice sometimes it self-populates, so it's already there. I'm going to be using tool number one for both the rough and the finish. Okay, and you see I got a starting point up there where that green dot is. So now it's saying, what are you doing first? A straight line or a curved line? We're going to do an arc. It's populated through the defaults to automatically pick clockwise, but I could change that with the drop-down menu. In this case, I'm going to leave it where it is. I'm going to finish at zero and minus 2.45 and it wants to know the center of the arc. So I'm just going to put zero, zero in there. You're going to notice that it turns to a solid green line. It says OK. So by now, you've also realized that we're in AGE programming. And the great thing about AGE is it's going to help you with programming this part. Because if you look at the ballpark diamond that we always use, it gives a point where the two lines come together and you blend that radius. We're going to do it more like a normal print would be, which is going to have two arcs, two centers, and you're going to have to figure out the tangency points. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select a milling event. And it says, is this milling event tangent? It is not, so I'm just going to hit the absolute key. It's asking where my X and Y ends, and those are the things that are missing on the print. So I'm going to use the guess button, and I'm just going to touch the screen and push enter guess. And you'll notice that it puts them in here with a G in front of them to say it's somewhere around here. 
So it says, what else can you tell me about this line? And if I knew the length of the line or the angle of the line, I would enter those. But in this case, I don't know those, so I'm simply going to swipe forward. So my next piece of geometry is an arc. It's asking me if this is tangent to there, and it is this time. So I'm going to push that button to turn it on and then hit absolute. It's assuming clockwise, and it's correct. Again, I don't know my ending points. So what I'm going to do is use the guess button again, touch up there, push enter guess, give what I do know the center is minus 1.75 and 0.375 in the Y. And the other thing that I know is that the radius is 0.841. So when I put that in there, you see it's starting to try to calculate it, but the dotted lines mean I need more information, right? So I'm going to swipe forward. I'm going to do another milling event. It's also tangent. And I'm going to end back at the top, which is 0 and 2.45. And you'll notice at that point that everything is a solid green line and everything says OK. Simply swipe forward and push End AGE. So that completes the outside of the pocket. Looking at the ballpark, in the center is normally a circular pocket. This time it's going to be a circular island. So it wants to know where it is. It's at 0, 0. And it has a radius of 1 8. OK? Whoops, I did that wrong. It has a radius of three quarters of an inch. Sorry about that. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another circular island. And in this case, I don't know where the center is, okay? Because my print only shows me a radius and an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the math help to help me. So in the math help, if I look into here under polar Cartesians and select F, type 25 in here says how to calculate an X and Y location at a certain angle. So I'm going to type 25 and I'm going to tell it that I've got an inch and a half for my radius and my angle's at 45 degrees. And once it does the math and tells me that's the center I'm looking for, all I have to do is simply push load center, close the window. And the last thing I'm gonna do is tell it the actual size, which is 1 8 and you'll see that one's there. Now I'm gonna do this for the other four, but I'm gonna do them a little differently. So the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to Circle Island, I'm gonna go back to Math Help, and I'm gonna just skip right to the shortcut of Type 25, and I'm gonna put in the same radius. But what I don't know is the angle. I know that 360 divided by 5 is 72, but I don't know what that is when I add it in my head to 45. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use the calculator. And in this window, I'm going to say 45 plus 72 equals 117. And just hit abset. And you notice it puts it in here and calculates. So I'm going to close that window, hit load center. And when I close the math help window, all I got to do is give it the radius again. Okay, so I'm going to speed through the other ones of these. I got a circle island. I'm going to use the math help, right? And I'm going to go straight to swipe 25. And I do actually know what my angles are on this because I've made it so many times. So I'm going to put in my 1.5. And for my angle, I know that it's actually 189 degrees. Okay, then I'm going to load center, close the window, put in the radius size. Okay. Next circle, back to math help, back to type 25. Okay, I'm going to put in my inch and a half. And I'm going to put in my angle, which is 261 degrees. Load the center, push the math help, add the radius. I got one more. Okay, so circle island, math help, type 25. I'm going to put in the angle and the radius, load the center, close the window, put in the radius. So as you can see there, that it's going to actually machine all of the blank area and leave all those circles standing. Last thing I got to do is push end island. And when I do that, at this point, the next thing I have to do is explain the tooling. Okay, so I'm going to hit the tool table. And in here, because I have a library for my tools with all my offsets already set, all I got to do is tell it which tools I'm using. So in here, I've got the first tool already in there from when I did the rectangle. And I, all I got to do is add this drill bit. So if I come over here and just say this is going to be tool number two, it automatically puts that in there and I'm ready to go. Close that flyout window, go to the setup mode, and go to tool path. And now it's going to crunch the numbers to make that tool path. So as you can see here, it's going to take about 33 minutes to cut this. And this is a standard toolpath that you would have in an SMX. However, I couldn't do it with this many islands without some trickery, right? So it's showing me how long it's going to cut it. And this is taking two passes in the Z depth as well, right? So now I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to go back to the program mode. 
and I'm just going to swipe back until I get to the beginning of this pocket. Oops, too far. There we are. And in the options page, I'm going to make some changes, but before I do that, I want to point out the fact that all the stuff that you've been seeing in the defaults, like the tool path and how it enters the material and whether I want to go clockwise or counterclockwise, those are all things that I set up for the way that I machine most of the time. What I'm going to do now is say, for this event, I want to change some of my normal defaults. So in my options page, I'm going to change from zigzag to helical, and I'm going to change from parallel to adaptive machining. Okay? I'm going to close that window, and now I'm going to come in here and make some changes. I know that I can do this to full depth now. I can boost up my RPM to 5,000 RPM and my finish as well. I can helical in at 40 inches a minute, run this at 60 inches a minute, and finish it at at least 50 inches a minute using the same tools. Okay, so now what you're going to see when I go back to the setup mode and I check the tool path is it's going to take a little longer to crunch the numbers. But the little bit of time that it takes for it to figure out this new toolpath is going to be way made up for in the amount of time that it machines. And that brings up a really important point. For years, we've been telling you that a prototrack is mostly used for making single parts and prototypes and short runs. And the reason for that is because it's the quickest way to get from print to cut and chips. You don't need a CAD system. You don't need a CAM system. You don't need anything but the ability to machine parts and speak English to run this thing, right? And, uh, and so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to tell you that it's not really important how fast it machines. It's really important how fast you get to the machining. We've told you that for 25 years or more. But now we're going to change that and say, you know, with the RMX and the touchscreen and the defaults and the options and the tool library, now not only will we get to the machining faster, but we'll actually be able to machine faster when we get there. Okay? So this is just about done calculating. And there you go. So now you can see through the adaptive tool path that the tool is going to stay in the pocket all the time. You can see that it decreased to almost a third of what it was in the machining time, right? And uh, I should also point out that if you actually look at what I could run this at at feed speeds, I could run it well over 100 inches a minute. But uh, because the video is cruise here and I want to keep them safe, I'm going to keep it to a reasonable value, okay? So uh, last thing I want to talk about is adaptive machining. With adaptive machining, I'm going to take a smaller cut at a much higher rate of speed. It's going to keep the tool cool. It's going to keep the material cool. So it's going to be easier with my work holding. Uh, my tools are going to last longer. Um, and in the meantime, I get the extra added bonus that I'm going to get it done a lot faster. Okay, so uh, last but not least, I want to push the return button and I'm going to show you the verify part. And in verify part, it's going to actually show you a simulation of what it is that I want to do. So you'll see it start the machining here and cutting through the part. Okay. And as this is going on, I just want to remind you that the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show how this is actually done with a real cutting video of making this part. I hope you can realize that there's huge benefit now to some of the things the RMX gives you, and I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching.